Our next talk is Modeling Contextual Information in Session-Aware Recommender Systems with Neural Networks. So, hello, I'm Bartomit Fardowski from Warsaw University of Technology and would like to tell you about the session Our Recommender System, which is also part of my PhD work. So first I will talk about my motivation and the problem definition, briefly describe two methods, and then present some outcome of experiments. Uh, so uh, the main uh, motivation is that we have uh, um, context our recommender system, but we cannot uh, directly apply it to uh, session data. And somehow uh, modeling the time dependencies between user events can be hard. We have to discretize it to, um, for a tensor factorization method or use it in the somehow bias in the, in the model. And also the motivation is for sure the successful stories of using neural networks in other areas. Um, and the industry motivation is uh, pretty clear. Capture the user's, uh, user's short-term goal as fast as possible. And this is somehow reasonable because in e-commerce, it's very hard to uh, actually uh, take the correct user account for the most of session. Uh, this, uh, here we've got some statistic from the biggest Polish marketplace that more than a half user session cannot be correctly identified, uh, only a few percent convert to transactions, and uh, lots of user events in a click stream is actually interaction between user and uh, search engine. And for me, the session is actually the best source of implicit user feedback. Here we've got the uh, user navigational graph uh, where the user first uh, going to a page and search for an item is an event S1, then sort by a price, see the first item, go to another one, add to cart, exchange with another, and session goes on. So lots of information. And here we've got the key research problem assumption that actually a user is not identified by some kind of ID or login, but by the current behavior. And all of the user action are in form of a session. Um, items are ephemeral, um, and the output of the recommender system is the top end uh, recommendation, so it's ranked least. Um, in this work, I um, uh, session is represented as a sequence of user actions that uh, it banduary is actually the user inactivity and each event is described by the set of an attribute and so does the item. Um, I treated item as an ephemeral entity uh, so we do not have a persistent ID here and uh, the ephemerality can be the reason for a short uh, short item life cycle or a product or service availability. Uh, so first what we have to do um, before going further for in calculation, we have to vectorize somehow the item and event uh, to real value of vectors. Um, so here I do the same thing for both uh, item and events and I use pretty simple methods like for uh, categorical values, I uh, do the one hot encoding. For textual, I, textual values, I treat as a bag of words. And numerical values are uh, normalized. So the first method is a, a matrix factorization, where we, the final estimation is actually the, uh, we can model it as an interaction between uh, the session vector and the item vector, where each feature in a session and the item vector is described by d-dimensional latent feature vector. So somehow this model is a very simplified version of uh, factorization machines. Um, so the session vectors um, in uh, this model is uh, the aggregation of uh, user uh, events inside this section. And here I use the time decaying uh, aggregation 
And that's why I call this method explicit, because I made some kind of assumption here. So, but we can do it better. We can do it automatically using uh, two types of uh, neural networks, when the recurrent neural network can be used to actually learn the representation of a session, and uh, feed-forward neural network can be used as a final estimation. Um, for uh, um, learning the ranking function, I uh, use the pairways um, loss function, like uh, by some personalized ranking or uh, top one. Uh, here's the architecture um, uh, diagram where we see that there is additional embedding layer if necessary, and um, there is also a dropout layer as a main regular as a main model reg regularization. Uh, the experiment were conducted on two data sets. The uh, first one uh, was gathered session from uh, before mentioned Allegro eMarketplace company, and the second one is Avito, is the data set available on the Kaggle platform. Uh, so um, I um, compared the model uh, popularity, a uh, content-based one, where the uh, similarity, similarity was a cosine uh, based, um, our matrix factorization, and the new one using a neural network. So here we see the summary results for a, a recall and a mean, mean reciprocal rank for a, a top uh, 12 uh, position. And um, each row is described by the algorithm, uh, loss function, and the contextual information when we see just uh, I letter is uh, only events that have association with an item, where we see uh, IE is also a search event that were taken into account. And we will see that for a rich um, session information like Allegro one, the, neural, the approach using, using neural network uh, are outperforming the other ones. But however, for Avito, matrix factorization is still uh, a better one. And two things worth mentioning here that uh, first, uh, I, uh, in this work, there were no um, hyperparameters optimization phase. Uh, and the second one is that uh, when I future invest, uh, when I investigate the Avito data, it uh, came that. Uh, those search even are actually mostly the subcategories and the regions, so it's mostly the tree navigation. Uh, here we see the dependency from uh, output length. Uh, this is somehow expected, and more, is more interesting is probably dependency from the input session length, and this I hope to present you soon, uh, to you soon uh, with another publication. So thank you. Questions? So let me start maybe with a quick question. Uh, whenever you know you have sort of a sequentiality in data, like you know user sessions, you know users progressing through a like some kind of a shopping session, you know uh, sometimes you know techniques like hidden Markov models. Maybe, maybe useful. I don't know if you tried that and how they compared to. Yeah, I consider it uh, because it was also used by uh, Stephen Randall in his work for uh, predicting next uh, next basket, next item basket prediction. But yeah, that's that's probably could be one of the methods that could be compared here. Anything else? Thank you for the talk. Uh, did, did I miss the data which you used? I, I, I didn't get the data which you used for your experiments. Uh, excuse me. What, what was what? the data set that you used? OK, so there was two data sets. Uh, one was uh, from the Polish marketplace company uh, called Allegro. And the other one was from the Avito data set. It was the competition on Kaggle. Is that answer your question? And it was lots, uh, the session was combined with, uh, from lots of uh, user events. Uh, for this Allegro company, it was like uh, item view, search event, uh, add to card, remove from card, buy event, uh, auction, uh, uh, bid event, uh, also the like a phone request event, and things like this. So pretty rich, I think.
Hi. Do you use different weights of this event in your model, or this is unified? So actually, for um, matrix factorization, I use only the positive uh, events, and for a recurrent neural network, I let the network to learn it. So I do not want to uh, introduce some weights. Okay. Thank you very much. In the interest of time, we'll move to the next talk.